Thank you very much. Thank you for asking me to speak today, and thank you to Cry for the uh, for the support. Um, so I'm following on from Mary in an interesting way because we're going to talk about the overlap with the normal heart. And since I've got so little to, so we've got so little time to talk about it, I could be here for ages, as you know. I tend to talk on when I can. Um, I'm going to focus it in a way that you're going to be so surprised, um, really surprised. Uh, it's the overlap with the Brigada syndrome, and as you know. Uh, this is something I tend to be slightly interested in. But when we look at ARVC and try and diagnose it clinically, um, we rely upon the task force criteria, looking at major and minor criteria. And these are available from circulation in 2010. They focus on findings on imaging, on pathology, whether it's biopsy or autopsy, uh, repolarization and depolarization findings on the ECG, diagnosis of arrhythmia, either on uh, Holter monitoring, exercise testing, or presentation with arrhythmia, uh, and family history and genotype. When we look at the Brigada syndrome, we diagnose this on the basis of recent guidelines in 2013, and then the recent update in 2016, which I think was certainly worth considering. And we look specifically for evidence of a spontaneous type 1 Brigada syndrome pattern, being aware that the type 2 and 3 patterns represent normal variants uh, that may uh, harbor the underlying uh, Brigada syndrome, but should not be considered diagnostic. And that in patients who have a good suspicion for Brigada syndrome, uh, that you may undertake azurelene provocation testing or another sodium channel blocker. And this uh, is an example of induction after three minutes of an injection of azurelene of a type 1 pattern in a young man whose brother died suddenly from Brigada syndrome or had a cardiac arrest secondary to Brigada syndrome. First, some history about this relationship between ARVC, uh, ACM, and Brigada syndrome. Um, back in, in 1988, uh, Nava and Martini published a, a report looking at precordial, well, I don't know how good your French is, but um, repolarization, uh, that I presume it means uh, um, early repolarization in the right precordial leads being associated with intraventricular conduction delay, and they studied this using vector cardiography. Um, now, I can't interpret vector cardiography myself, and I don't know if anybody else can. Uh, it's a technique that's fallen out. But please note here that this conduction delay on vector cardiography was associated with a clear type 1 Brigada ECG pattern. They then went on to describe a series of six cases that were of uh, cardiac arrest with ventricular fibrillation presenting with apparently normal hearts. Um, and when they looked in detail at their ECGs, you'll see at least one of these had clear evidence of a type 1 Brigada ECG pattern. And we looked at the characteristics of these cases. Many had evidence of right, right ventricular wall motion abnormalities on uh, uh, imaging studies. And when they underwent histological assessment, there was often evidence of fibrosis and adipose tissue, um, suggestive of an underlying right ventricular structural disease. Then in 1992, the Brigada brothers described the syndrome of right bundle branch block with um, ST segment elevation and sudden cardiac death as an electrical disease, a primary electrical disease with no evidence of any um, structural abnormality. And then subsequently, the Japanese termed it the Brigada syndrome uh, when, when following it up in their families. The Italians countered this time uh, with Corrado et al. Um, investigating their population with uh, previous ECG screening that I'm sure you've heard about before in previous presentations. Um, and these were hearts um, from sudden deaths where the previous ECG was available and there were cases clearly of Brigada syndrome uh, as well, the type 1 Brigada ECG pattern. And they looked at these hearts and felt that there was evidence for right ventricular fibrosis and fatty infiltration. And if you want to look into this historical um, debate. You can uh, look at this paper by Viskin of the tale of two diseases in Jack uh, from last year, uh, which gives you part of the, the, the diagnostic and, uh, uh, and pathophysiological dilemma in the Brigada syndrome, uh, the repolarization versus the depolarization theory in the right ventricular outflow tract. The uh, primary electrical theory is that the epicardium, uh, epicardial action potential becomes abnormal with loss of the potential dome, and this is heterogeneous and transmural. Or alternatively, that the ECG is caused by delayed activation, causing exactly the same pattern, and this is the depolarization theory. And the evidence for the repolarization abnormality comes from right ventricular canine wedge models. So this is basically cutting out 
a right ventricular wedge from, the, uh, from a dog, perfusing it, putting ECG electrodes across it, subjecting it to a number of, uh, um, of um, pharmacological challenges, and then presenting the ECG transmurally as being that of the Brigada syndrome. Uh, and there have also been mutations affecting the dome of the action potential, the transient output current found, and we also know that isoprenaline and quinidine therapy, both affecting the transient outflow, transient outward current, that, affect that, that affects that, um, uh, that um, uh, action potential dome. Uh, these are therapeutic uh, modalities in the Brigada syndrome. What about the evidence for right ventricular outflow tract conduction abnormality? And this is actually increasingly uh, convincing uh, evidence. There are common phenotypic features amongst Brigada syndrome patients of conduction disease and signal average ECGs demonstrating late potentials, much like in ARVC patients. Septal biopsies of the right ventricular outflow tract, when people have been daring enough to do that, have, uh, in, uh, have shown abnormalities. And then one heart transpl uh, explanted from an individual with uh, recurrent shocks with Brigada syndrome showed evidence of myocardial fibro fatty infiltration and conduction abnormalities uh, when that was perfused but with no evidence of that repolarization gradient seen, all about conduction delay in the right ventricular outflow tract, very much in keeping with the depolarization theory. And if you look at Brigada syndrome patients in vivo, and you paste them from the right ventricle, and you map their, the endocardium for activation of the heart, I'd like to show you the Brigada syndrome cases on the left there compared to controls on the right. If you look at the blue and the purple, that's at the top of the heart, that's evidence of delay of activation compared to controls on the right-hand side when pacing there, so that indicates slowing of electrical activation in the heart. And uh, if you look on the, uh, at the bottom page, that's activation time. The actual electrogram duration time takes longer. This is, it's taking longer to get through the tissue as well as to get uh, to the uh, right ventricular outflow tract. And this has also been mirrored by work studying, ep mapping the epicardium of the heart, uh, where evidence for these uh, late potentials that you'll see over here, these are delayed, fragmented potentials indicative of fibrosis and conduction delay being seen on the epicardial surface of the heart. Um, and ablation of these, these are the red dots, leads to uh, elimination of the Brigada syndrome, ECG pattern, and a reduction of risk. Furthermore, ARVC link mutations that are pretty convincing in their pathological effect have been detected in, uh, in a cohort of uh, Brigada syndrome patients with good functional data to support these. So clearly there is a trend towards ca arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy underlying um, Brigada syndrome and a clear overlap with this, uh, this uh, condition and it appears to relate to the right ventricular outflow tract. Now the right ventricular outflow tract has a different embryology from the rest of the heart, uh, the, um, uh, the left ventricle, and the main body of the right ventricle. It comes from the second heart field that a neural crest cell derived. Connexin 43 is the main gap junction protein evolved in myocyte to myocyte electrical uh, continuity. And if you look at these, these, are, uh, these pictures, these show uh, immunohistochemical uh, evidence of connexin 43 and placoglobin, the desmosomal protein seen in ARVC, is uh, seen to be disturbed in ARVC, being associated together at the end plates between myocytes. And this is a very pretty presentation of that, the gap junctions at both ends. And if you knock out um, these gap junctions in mice, you lose the right ventricular outflow tract. Uh, and if you study ARVC patients in particular, and one of our colleagues here, Dr. Asimaki, pioneered this, connexin 43 is missing as well as placoglobin at the end plate and redistributed elsewhere. So we decided to look at our Brigada syndrome cases with, uh, to look for evidence of fibrosis and gap junction expression in right ventricular outflow tract and see if that correlates with conduction delay in vivo. We took unexplained sudden death cases and so normal hearts diagnosed by Mary as normal through the, right bundle, uh, for, through the uh, Royal Brompton Hospital Harefield access before she moved to St. George's, diagnosed with familial Brigada syndrome, SADS cases that have gone through the usual evaluation that we undertake and that you, uh, many of you will undertake using high ECG leads to uh, look for evidence of the Brigada syndrome, signal averaged ECGs, uh, and taking forward those with normal or suspicious ECGs for asthmaline provocation testing, uh, MRI imaging, and sodium channel testing. That's our usual diagnostic process. Um, 
we had six cases where the families had allowed us to retain the whole heart for research. We also identified uh, six control cases, age, sex match from the homograph valve donors from the, from the um, hair, from hair field where the right ventricular heart flow tract was still intact. And these were non-sudden deaths. And we also had ARVC cases matched as best possible. And you've seen Mary undertook her, her usual specialist cardiac autopsy. Um, in addition, we did an extra stain looking for collagen in particular, and we also dissected the right ventricular outflow tract as finely as possible. And what we identified was epicardial fibrosis, the Brigada cases on the left compared to the age and sex match controls on the right, which was consecutively apparent for all these cases. And we also found evidence of, um, uh, of fibrosis uh, in the myocardium. These are, this is evidence of normal linear collagen that we see in controls, linear and vascular collagen. And this is what we saw subtly and patchily appearing in the right ventricular outflow tract of Brigada syndrome cases. This is fibrosis uh, replacement and interstitial fibrosis admixed with fat. And when we undertook an analysis to quantify that and compared Brigada syndrome cases on the left, pat the left column with controls and ARVC versus Brigada syndrome, we found that um, Brigada syndrome cases had more fibrosis than controls and ARVC cases had more fibrosis than Brigada syndrome and that this was most apparent in the outflow tract but could still be seen in the left ventricle and the right ventricle. So that Brigada syndrome cases have more fibrosis in the left ventricle than controls or more collagen than controls and was most marked in the epicardium compared to the endocardium. And we also then looked at Connexin 43 distribution patterns because these seem to be reduced as well in, uh, in Brigada syndrome cases. And indeed, we found that there was an association between Brigada syndrome and, or reduced expression um, uh, and distribution of uh, Connexin 43 at the end plate in Brigada syndrome cases versus controls. And that was seen also in ARVC versus Brigada syndrome. So we seem to be seeing Brigada syndrome sitting in a spectrum of fibrosis and cap junction abnormalities in between ARVC and normal, apparently healthy hearts. We then went on to do a study of six cases undergoing open heart epicardial ablation, five in Thailand and five in Japan in, uh, in collaboration with colleagues who are undertaking open heart ablation doing the epicardial ablation studies I mentioned to you before, but this time we could see these fractionated, fragmented, delayed potentials indicative of delayed activation and, and what we would interpret as fibrosis, and they were able to biopsy them directly. And what we found was the same epicardial fibrosis and the same invagination of um, uh, tissue replacement and focal replacement fibrosis into the epicardial myocardium. Um, and those patients were ablated, and their type 1 Brigada pattern disappeared, and was uh, pretty much ameliorated even when given ajmaline post-ablation. And these patients ended up doing very well, having been suffer having suffering uh, multiple shocks prior to their procedure. And what about less severe patients? Can we see evidence of uh, right ventricular abnormalities in just your, your average Brigada syndrome patient who might not um, be going for ablation treatment or have died suddenly and be in Mary's hands? Well, this is our, uh, a, a sample of 80 of our cases, roughly 80 of our cases versus healthy controls who underwent cardiac MR, MR imaging. And what we found that there was a, an abnormality in the right ventricular end systolic volume, right ventricular ejection fraction, and the presence of LGE um, in the left ventricle. Although these were, uh, these were quantitative differences, they were not qualitative enough to make clinical differentiation or differences between cases. These are examples of the LGE we saw in some of the patients very typical of that distribution that Mary was showing associated with arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy and that we see in our ACM patients. And in fact, one of them, uh, one patient uh, evolved a more myopathic picture, while another one was found to have a desmoplakin mutation. And this therefore may be part of that spectrum of overlap between Brigada syndrome and ARVC. So in conclusion, the Brigada substrate is in the right ventricular outflow tract epicardium that can also be involved in arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. There's mounting evidence for conduction delay as being the underlying um, pathophysiological abnormality. And I would hazard to you the uh, hypothesis that this is a, a localized form of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy. Thank you for your attention. Here are many of the people who've been involved in our studies.
um, and I'm very much open to any questions.